So um, thanks for the introduction, Amir. Honored to be here uh, talking um, to you guys. The topic for the next uh, 15 minutes or so um, is going to be how we use Spire at Nginx um, and F5 um, and the CRD that we developed as part of that work. Uh, my name is Faisal Mamin. Um, I work at F5. Um, F5 acquired Nginx, the open source uh, web server that I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with. Uh, that acquisition completed about a year and a half ago now at this point. Um, so now we're, we are the Nginx uh, business unit within F5. Um, and that lovely little girl there is my almost five-year-old uh, daughter. Uh, my agenda for today, uh, first I want to talk about how we use Spire at Nginx and F5 and the value that we've gotten from, from the software. Um, and then talk about the CRD that we pushed back to the community um, and the reasons for creating that and the value that's provided to us. Uh, and then a demo of that CRD in action. Um, and then I want to talk a little bit about um, what we're going to be doing going forward. Um, so what we use Spire for is we implement it or integrate it rather within our service mesh offering. So we recently, about a month ago, put out our uh, service mesh offering that uses Nginx um, as a sidecar proxy and data plane. Um, and as part of that offering, um, we deploy um, Spire. And we use Spire for a lot of different things within our service mesh. Uh, the original use case for Spire um, and why we you know, started investigating in the first place was for NTLS. Um, and so we use Spire to distribute the certificates um, that all our sidecars then use to um, do secure communication with one another. Um, we use Spire at the identity level as well. So Spire provides the identity um, for each of our sidecars. Um, and then we allow the administrator to specify policies based on that identity to limit uh, who can talk to who. So service A can talk to service B. Uh, but not service C, for example. Um, so a lot of that complex policy uh, we support and we um, run that all through Spire with data plane enforcement um, by Nginx. Um, we use Spire to manage our webhook certificates. So Spire um, works really well for that use case um, that we use uh, the Spire certificates um, and then we use Spire and the agent, of course, to rotate the certificate as well as the CA bundle um, within the validating webhook configuration. So that helps keep the webhook certificates fresh. <clears throat> and of course, we also use Spire for our um, API server certificate. Um, and that's this little white box right here. So our API server um, is what handles, for example, our mutating uh, webhook that ejects the sidecars and what also pushes out the policy to our sidecar. So it's a big a component in our control plane. And of course we need a certificate to protect that. And for that certificate, we rely on Spire to, uh, to distribute it and rotate it for us. Um, so needless to say, we use Spire at a lot of different points within our service mesh. Uh, so moving forward, um, as part of this work, we created a CRD for Spiffy. Um, CRDs are very ubiquitous, of course, within the Kubernetes world. They're very versatile. A uh, very useful tool uh, for extending uh, Kubernetes and um, providing um, additional integration points um, with, with Kubernetes. And so we've been able to leverage the CRD framework to better integrate Spire uh, with Kubernetes. Um, so why use a CRD? Um, and so this, the CRD that we, we developed as part of the Kubernetes workload registrar, uh, if you remember from Augustine's presentation earlier, he mentioned that there was a new CRD mode that was released as part of Spire 0.11.0. Um, so that's what this is. Um, so a lot of benefits you get from the CRD. Um, my favorite one is the kubectl integration. Um, and so looking at that YAML code on the, in the gray box right there, um, it, you know, you should see a lot of the standard fields um, if you create uh, Spire entries uh, on the Spire server with the Spiffy ID, the parent ID, the selectors. Um, so with the CRD, you can now define those as a YAML file um, and then kubectl apply them, um, kubectl edit, kubectl delete. So you can manage the full life cycle um, of uh, Spiffy IDs and Spire registration entries right from the kubectl command line. Um, we support auto-generation of Spiffy IDs as well. So you can have um, the 
the Kubernetes workload register auto issue certificates um, based on pods being created and then um, clean up the Spire server when they're, when they're deleted. Uh, we do parenting of the Swifty IDs to the node. Um, and so that gives an extra level of security that the particular Swifty ID is tied to that node. So you can use that um, workload on a different node that it's not authorized to run on. Uh, we add DNS names to the certificates and that was actually our main um, reason here for, for developing this, the CRD is that Nginx um, as part of MTLS certificate verification on the client side requires that, that the server certificate have a DNS name. Um, so we needed that DNS name populated and we needed that DNS name populated in an automated manner. Um, and so the CRD system um, along with the endpoint reconciler um, really worked nicely for that use case. Um, it's fully event driven, so it's, it's very uh, resource efficient. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, um, it's a standards based solution. CRDs are just a standard way to extend Kubernetes. And um, it's nice that we're able to plug into that, that type of framework. Okay. Um, and with that, I'm just going to go into a demo of um, the CRD in action. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to my, my desktop here. Um, and so our demo here is built on. A simple PSAT uh, example here that's available within the Spiffy GitHub repo under Spire examples. Um, okay, it's simple PSAT. So if you go here, um, there's there's a nice little quick start for PSAT. And so our what I'm going to do is built on this PSAT. Um, and I have a quick start guide available. Um, right now it's in my fork, uh, but we have a PR open um, to merge this um, upstream. Um, but um, so I'm going to go over here. Um, so first thing, is here, so um, I'm just starting off with um, just the Spire server and agent deployed. Um, in this case, I have a two-node cluster. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm um, just going through my quick start guide uh, and supply a set of YAMLs. Um, and nothing out of the ordinary here. We need to apply a cluster roll a config map, uh, validating web hook configuration, and of course the actual um, custom resource definition. So I go ahead and apply all that um, and that goes through. Um, the next thing I need to do is update our Spire server stateful set. So our Kubernetes workload registrar um, runs as an additional container um, within the uh, Spire server stateful set pod. Um, and so what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and update that stateful set. Um, and so now if I go kubectl get pods minus n spire, we'll see here that it's uh, it deleted the, the old um, spire server pod with just one um, container. And now we're creating a second one. That takes a, a minute or so to uh, set up. Um, so while that's um, running through, I was just gonna show you uh, the YAML file that I was gonna apply. Um, so here we have just a very simple um, Spiffy ID um, parented here to just the Spire server um, parent um, and has a few selectors, um, default namespace, um, name of the pod, um, whatever, and that can be whatever your pod name is. And of course, just some standard mm -hmm. um, Spiffy ID. Um, so now I'm just gonna quickly make sure that everything is up and running. So now we see here that um, there's two containers now running within this pod. One is the Spire server, of course, one's the, the, the registrar um, that does all the logic of, of um, taking in the CRD and converting that to uh, Spire um, registration entries. So now I can go kukato apply minus F, S, oops. YAML. Um, and you can see that that YAML is created. Um, and I can go crew cuddle get spiffy IDs. Um, and we can see here um, that my new spiffy ID was created. And I can even do the, you know, crew cuddle spiffy IDs minus O YAML. Um, and we can see that, um, you know, Kubernetes, of course, adds a bunch of stuff to it. Um, but the spec is, is the same as the YAML. Um, and um, one thing we do is we add the entry ID. So this is the corresponding entry um, on the Spire server. So that gets added to. Um, the, the custom resource in the status field when the actual entry is created. Um, 
And one other thing I can do, I'm just going through my quick start guide here, is I can just verify on the Spire server that in fact, um, the entry was created. Oops, I think I copied too much. Sorry, I copied a little bit too much there. There we go. Um, and so from you know the YAML file, we did kubectl apply, and the end result, of course, is um, an entry gets created on the Spire server. Um, and I can, of course, kubectl edit um, spiffy ID my dash text dash spiffy ID. Uh, so I can edit it and I can say, you know, for example, um, um, you know, I want to change the ID on a likes test. I want to use test here and I can go ahead and save it. Um, and I can go look at the Spire server and I can see that um, it's the same exact entry. So the entry ID um, is identical, um, but the, we have a new spiffy ID. Um, um, deployed. So, um, so that's the, the CRD in action. Um, and just going back to my slide deck. Uh, looking forward. Um, so I mentioned that we have a PR open. Um, and so what this PR does, is it simplifies uh, the configuration of, of the registrar. So um, a lot of the feedback I got, um, uh, the initial version that we put out um, was that it was too complicated uh, because it has a validating webhook um, and that validating webhook needs a certificate. Um, so what we did is we went back to the drawing board, how we can remove that requirement. Um, and so now we're gonna use um, Spire itself to populate the certificate uh, for the validating webhook. So that uh, greatly simplifies the configuration um, and we're combining that um, PR with, with that quick start guide um, that I put um, up there. So it makes it very easy for you guys to, to test this out um, and, and see how it works for you. Um, we're looking into SAT tester support. So right now, um, the, the registrar just supports PSAT, um, but a lot of our sales engineers use uh, Kubernetes platforms like um, Kind or the built-in uh, Docker for Mac Kubernetes, um, where for whatever reason, we're not able to modify uh, the API server configuration. So, um, so supporting PSAT is not, not possible on those platforms. So we're looking into SAT tester support to get a broader range of platforms supported. Um, we're looking to add more DNS names to certificates. So right now we're just adding just the two, the name of the pod and then the name of the service associated with the pod. Um, we wanna fill that in with a full set of DNS names available. Um, and the last thing we're looking into is updating to use the latest set of Spire APIs um, that was just recently put out with 11.0. Um, and if you wanna try it out, um, that link is kind of long. Uh, but we're going to send out the slide decks afterward. Uh, so I'd love for you guys to try it out. Let me know what you think. Is it good? Is it not good? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Um, any feedback uh, is definitely welcomed. All right. Thank you guys for your time. I really appreciate it. And um, uh, let's see if there were any questions. Oh, great. Thank you so much, Faisal, especially for the demo as well. A any questions for Faisal? So far? I thought I saw one or two, but I don't see. Yeah, maybe they message you privately. Um, okay. If you can just double check too. I know a, a few of the attendees have been um, doing private questions too. That would be great. You might have Let's had see. it on your slides, but not sure what's the best place to uh, direct folks to take a look at the code. There it is. Sorry, it's, it's, um, I got some question here. So have you, or let's see, have you Would looked you at be? service, have you looked at service meshes like Istio, uh, Kuma, et cetera? Um, so of course we have looked at, at all those, um, you know, as part of making our own service mesh solution, right? Why do we, why should we add to it already crowded space where there's like a million service mesh offerings? Um, and so our initial effort was to try to plug into Istio and use Nginx as, um, Sidecar proxy with it, Istio, but that, that effort um, had a lot of complications um, with it. Um, and so we just decided at some point that it, it, it'd be better um, to create our own, our service mesh offering. And, and our main differentiation with our service mesh offering is that we're trying to make it 
uh, more open. So if you saw it with our little block diagram, we had um, Grafana, Prometheus, Spire, obviously the reason I'm here talking today. Um, so it's very, very much using a lot of the open source components that you guys are familiar with. Um, you're also trying to make it very simple, um, very easy to deploy, very easy to use. And so those are our two key differentiation points as to why um, we're creating our own. Great. Um, I think thank you for sharing the link in the chat window. Uh, cool. and, 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 and Faisal, you're around, right? If people have uh, questions, they can Slack you or they can put in the chat window. Correct. Yeah, I'm around. Slack me on the Stiffy Slack. I'm, I'm in there and, and um, I'll be monitoring um, this chat window the rest of the day. Uh, thank you guys. I appreciate the, appreciate the time. Great. Thank you so much.